for this. Hi, my ladies. I'll say hello again. I'm glad you four popped on. We're going to make this call super productive. I want to kick off May really, really strong, obviously, because it's a brand new month. Super excited. Um, I will, at the end of the call, I want to ask my Quintana peeps to just say, you know, their biggest takeaway, but we'll hold that off until the very end. Um, but I want to kind of just get into some of the big announcements for this month. I don't know if you've read your Diamond Insider, but so many great key points that are in there that I want you to be very, very fully aware of. Obviously, you are aware that the 160 um, Challenge Pack is continuing forward. If you saw in there, it actually, 50% um, more people bought a challenge pack in April compared to March. And so that promotion definitely did work out really well for us. Um, so I would say capitalize on it. It does say in the Diamond Insider, it's until August 2017. So it's going through the through Summit. Um, so just be fully aware of that. Um, also, the Success Club Prize, the John C. Maxwell call, that will be life-changing. So make sure that you are very much plugging that. If um, somebody doesn't know who John C. Maxwell is, um, I kind of feel like they live under a rock. So very much educate them, you know, who, what kind of big deal this is, or maybe they're just not into personal development. This is a great way, especially if they have never been a leader, never thought they were going to be a leader. John C. Maxwell is the person to obviously go to. So that is a huge one. The second thing, or the third thing, is the invitations to summit the parties, ladies. Make sure that you are talking about these. It does have the FAQ in there, but leadership ladder reception. Basically, for this one, you must qualify as a team leader, organization leader, executive leader during the month of May and be a paid two-star diamond or above. The FAQ on that is 4246, so make sure you check that out. Also, the Success Club party, you must have the Success Club 5 in both April and May with a minimum of 20 Success Club points between the two. And then um, you'll be notified, obviously, by June 9th if you did get uh, um, an invite to that. But I will tell you right now, and I know all of you ladies know this, you have to go to the stinking party. Like that is where the excitement and the fun is. Um, and so really make sure you are telling your team about that. Um, the last thing that I want to go over is Summit 2017 um, opportunity to um, go in and do registration for that is opening up. So basically you have priority if you were elite or premier in 2017, current all-star legends, all-stars, um, five-star diamond and above. As long as you are paid as a bonus week ending in March 29th as a five-star, you will have priority registration for Summit. And that is going to be, and you'll get an email on this, but this is going to, going to be on the third all other registration is on May 10th. So just make sure that you ladies are completely aware of that. And the last one I want to say is um, the going into qualification for a new rank to be recognized at Summit, right? Um, today on the call, just reminder when Darren did say May 4th, which is this week, that is the start of the business week. So basically waking up on May 11th in that qual, does that make sense? So make sure going into qual, waking up on Thursday, May 11th, right? The bonus week starting May 4th and then holding it for six weeks takes you to June 15th. So if any of your coaches or yourself are wanting to walk across stage at a different rank, that's the qualifications for that. Is that clear? Okay. A lot of announcements. I just wanted to make sure that I went over them because I know a lot of you have been off partying, playing, or working your business like crazy. Maybe you didn't have a chance to open up your email and see what's going on in May. So that's what that is there. But let's jump into this. Challenge groups. Okay. I kind of want to go, I just want to lead um, with Lindsay, what she was saying this morning about challenge groups. And it's nice to hear that such an incredible coach, such a pretty much a founding coach per se. I mean, in the business for eight years and all the accomplishments and accolades that she's accomplished that even at her, where she's at in life, she still needs to revamp them, re-up them, make them fun and exciting. So will you ladies tell me just a couple of your best practices when it comes to challenge groups? And anybody can unmute themselves. This is kind of a free-for-all, but I want you all to kind of, I want each of you to share. Ready? I'm going to start with up, actually up top. I'm going to call Julianne out and I'm going to unmute you. Okay, go. So my best practices for challenge groups, I mean, it's kind of a broad thing. So I'm going to take it outside the challenge group. Are you wanting it inside the challenge group best practice? No, I would just say to keep them exciting. Yep. Whatever you, that means to you. Yep. So for me, I, it is so important when I run challenge groups, it's based on what I'm craving because it's your avatar, right? So my avatar is craving it. I've been doing a lot of book clubs uh for my challenge group so i just did i just finished reading i am that girl it's such a good book so my next boot camp is i am that girl boot camp starting on may 8th 
Uh, and what we do is sometimes I give the book and sometimes I don't, but I also open it up to my downline if they want in. Uh, and typically I'm always sharing on social media that I'm reading this book. So they're like, what's that book you're reading? What's that book you're reading? And I'm like, oh, do you want to be a part of my boot camp? Um, and then what I do is it's a chapter a day. And then I just break it down. We do a lot of reflection. And so that has been amazing, not only for my growth and personal development, but also connecting to my audience in just a deeper way versus taking it outside of just fitness and nutrition. Another best practice that I have in my challenge groups that has transformed my thinking of Shakeology, but also my downlines thinking of Shakeology and my customer retention for Shakeology has been a Shaco ingredient highlight of the day. And so what I do is I start my morning off with a post from the book. And then um, mid morning, I always do a highlight. And so I subscribe to the Shaco YouTube channel. And what I'll do is I'll share um, if I'm not either in my text, I share the ingredient highlight and then the video is how to make a delicious shake. Uh, so Chris Downing just came up with one today. Like I just saw it and his favorite one. And so I shared it already and was just like, oh my gosh, this is so great. And his favorite shake that he makes. Um, or I find a graphic with one that looks like a snicker shake, right? Like a, a snicker doodle shake or something. And so then I pay, uh, post that graphic in there. So my point to that is one time I posted this <laughs> the ingredient highlight and someone wrote, I need to go find this. And I'm like, no, 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 it's in your shake. Like it's, it's, you already have it. And she was like, Oh, like, she's like, this is incredible. Um, so what that has done is built a belief uh, with my challengers and also my coaches. Um, and that's, I also take that outside of my challenge groups and put that in my team page of Shakeology ingredient highlights and all these different things. Are you subscribing to the YouTube channel? Are you listening to Darren Oline on the um, podcast app and all that stuff? So those are my two best practices. Something that I just heard is make it not just about fitness and nutrition in your challenge groups, um, connect them with life. Like what would you do if you had an extra hundred dollars? Um, something that I just did, uh, Trina Gray is amazing. And she did this in her PS page. They did the girl code book and they had to check in with the selfie with their book. So what she did for each graphic she made for each day of the, the book club is she took um, a coach's graphic with that book and then made that the graphic of the day and did a coach highlight with the check-in for the book. So I'm going to do that for my girl. Um, I am that girl. Um, all of my challengers who post a picture, I'm actually going to turn that into a graphic, make a highlight or a highlight challenger for that day um, to make that connection and community. Oh my gosh. I love all that. Can you tell me real quick, what is that book about? I am that girl. Oh my gosh. It's, it's just about like owning who you are and not being like, just like legitimately being authentically you. And oh, you guys, I have to share this real fast. Sorry. I, like, I just have to do this. She does this girl manifesto in the beginning. I'm just going to read you four sentences of it. And then you're like, I'm going to read that book. Um, I am enough. I have enough. I do enough. I am me every day. Do not, are not who I think others expect me to be but the real unedited, beautiful, perfectly flawed version. And then she's like, I breathe life into my dreams and to the dreams of others. And I surround myself with phenomenal people. Like that was just like a glimpse of like how this book starts. And you're just like, yes, like fist pumping the air every time you're reading it. Um, and yeah. what I'm doing is mastering your mean girl. Yeah, Sorry, that. I'm just really excited for you. Hit this book. It's so good. It's transformed my team. I, I am that girl. Who's author of it? Alexis Jones. It's a nonprofit that she's doing it for, but oh my gosh, she teaches you how to say no to people. Like say you have two like parties booked and you're tired. She teaches you how to say, sorry, I just need me time. And like say in a way that you're just like so confident about not saying yes to everything. It's really great. I love it. Thank you. I love the fact that you are connecting with life. You said specifically with that. Um, but the whole thing about challenge groups, and I, I know you ladies know this, but it's for them to walk away. I mean, not only a new version of themselves, but an internal change that they can continue to grow and expand upon life. I mean, that's what this whole nutrition fitness thing is. Even if you help your coaches and your customers lose a ton of weight, if you do not change that internal dialogue, they will never keep it off. And so I love the fact that you plug that book. I love, love it. Thank you so much for starting. Okay, who wants to go next? Yeah, Tulin, go. 
Sorry, guys, I was late. But we had uh, our leaders in our mothership group got together. Okay, so real quick on how I run my challenge group. So I have a very specific woman um, that I, I work with. I know her, I am her. And, um, and when I put together my challenge groups, I actually start two new ones every single week. And I don't try to get them... I, and I don't think it's a size exclusive at all. I'm just, you'll hear me referring to my woman who's a plus size woman. This is clearly any size um, struggle. So this whole idea of like throwing everything against the wall, you got to eat really well to begin with, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all at once. While we know those are the steps we need to take in order to have long-term success, we have to step into that. So all my groups are actually mental mindset. As a matter of fact, my very first group is very basic and it goes in layers. So every week, has a topic that's a layer. So I would look at who the, you have probably a traditional person you work with. Not all of us are helping anyone, right? But anyone can fit into your topic because the struggles are the same. So I, so that first group, I actually call it move your body. And move your body is dedicated to them actually working on the mental mindset and just learning to earn, learn to um, accept and love this process of moving their body and not caring if they get the steps perfectly. And if they can only do three minutes, that's fine. If they have an injury to do it in a chair, that's okay. Or mobility issues or whatever it is. So I tackle that mental mindset on a weekly basis. As a matter of fact, I don't even talk about nutrition at all, at all. I have a prep um, content that I put them in the week before that they come in. And as long as they sign up by that Friday, they go into prep. And then um, what I do is they'll move into the move your body group. And again, that's broken up. Once they complete that, and again, they have to be on Shakeology for all of this, I have another group that specifically dives into a deeper level of coaching. And even in that group, you guys, you're now 60 days in, I'm not giving the step-by-steps on eating. But because I put the dense nutrition in their body, guess, and moving their body, guess what starts happening? They naturally start eating better. And the thing is, is I'm able to raise their confidence within 24 to 48 hours. These are women who don't even have pictures of their kids. And the next thing you know, they're at Dr. Seuss day standing right next to the kid and they've only maybe lost two pounds, but they feel so good and empowered. I help them find and pull out their inner badass basically. And then, so the next, so that's that next level of coaching. Again, they must remain on Shakeology. I, every once in a while, will get somebody to write me and say, oh, I'm sorry, I have to stop my Shakeology. They can never say it's because I have too much of it because it's a requirement to be in there. They have to be drinking their Shakeology. They have a Facebook group that supports it. Um, I actually run all my stuff through Kajabi. Um, and it's just because my content is there. And so they, because of the massive amount of support that they get in our group with each other and also with me, but especially with each other, and Shakeology makes such a big difference for them, they will not get off of their Shakeology because one, they know it's making a difference for them, and two, they don't want to lose access to that group. They do not want to lose access to the group. And I require them to go through the coaching content. And the best part about Kajabi is I can actually see if they're actually watching the videos and things like that. And so they know that they have a responsibility to themselves and the group to go through the coaching content. And everybody has permission to say that if they ask a question and you can tell they haven't gotten that part of the coaching content or maybe didn't go through it, they will say, hey, that's did you check out the group prep um, where we talk about Shakeology? Did you, ch oh, that, um, hey, you'll be running into that in the Move Your Body group. Make sure you're doing that coaching content on a daily basis. And so, and then I'll have like different things in the group, but I really, really, really focus on layer. They do not get into nutrition. Uh, about the week three, I do food and mood. And they don't really start to get into nutrition until they practice those first two. It's about 90 days before I get them hardcore nutrition. They're already losing weight, their mindset, because they worked on the weight between their ears. 99.9% .9 of us, it's not 70% of the population that looks like me has a weight on their body. 99.9% .9 of this population is carrying the weight between their ears. If I can tackle that first, and I have them um, read The Magic of Thinking Big, but I like some of these books that Julian just mentioned, um, The Magic of Thinking Big. Uh, compound effect. They understand that, but they just find the inner badass in the group and then it trickles into other parts of their life. And that's also how I convert them to start wanting to do coaching. Boom. There you go. Thank you. Helpful. No, that was incredible. Both of you ladies. I love it. Okay. Who wants to go next? Andy, Amy, Melissa. I'll go. Okay. Go girlfriend. 
Um, so, uh, I, it's kind of spinning off of a lot of what you guys are saying with, um, just that personal development piece of it and that being like number one. Um, but I haven't really thought of it in the layers and I really like that. And I think I'm going to use that because I think that sometimes we do throw everything at once at them. And I think that I definitely got into this pattern of like, you know how, like as coaches, sometimes you're like, I'm bored with my challenge groups, but then you think, but for these people, this is like their first time or their second time. And so they're not bored with it. And so I try to remember that, but then also like trying to remember that, you know, it seems so like normal and everyday to me or to my veteran challengers, but to the new people, they do need that layering system. So I'm going to maybe try to impl implement that into my next group. I start my group next week, but, um, I don't think I added personal development into my challenge groups for like the first year and a half I was a coach, you know, like it, it didn't like click to me that like personal development to be a coach was like something that my challengers would need. I don't know why it took me so long to figure that out, but it is like I, um, who was it that I heard say, you know, um, did we talk about this on our last call where it's like your personal development is maybe two when you said it, but like the, the fitness for your brain, you said something, somebody said something like that. And I was like, duh, you know, but it just, it took me a while to kind of make that connection for my challenge groups. But I haven't done like a specific book club type thing or anything during my groups. I love that idea, but I definitely just try to weave a lot more of that personal development throughout my groups. Um, and I try to, um, one thing I also, you know, I'm doing a little bit more now that I wasn't doing, it's like, I'm always talking about when my next group's coming, but I wasn't sharing enough publicly what was actually happening in my groups. And so I found that when I started doing that more, when I was like asking, you know, somebody would drop like an awesome comment in there and I'd say, this is super inspiring. Like, would you mind if I shared this, even if it's like an anonymous challenger quote, but like just breadcrumbing that, um, you know, the little bits and pieces of like awesome things that are happening within our groups because you know our followers hear the word challenge group and fitness group all the time but they really probably don't have any idea that it's a lot dip deeper than like you guys said just the fitness and nutrition it's the mindset confidence personal development all that sort of thing um let's see what Tulin said takes your current content and just put it into layers okay <laughs> So anyway, yeah, but, um, just sharing to, to, like you said, um, when you're trying to get that excitement for your next group and I definitely, I, I'm sure you all can relate where, you know, you're doing this for years and years. And so you're trying to think, how do I keep this fresh? And I have like a lot of awesome veteran challengers that like, I'm sure you guys do too. They stick with you. They just love your groups. They could care less if you ever posted anything, but they just want to be in the group to check in. And I think that's like a huge vital piece to our groups. And I love that. But then I also remember that, um, you know, sharing publicly the excitement about, you know, the transformations, even if they're small, like I said, even if they're a quote or, you know, um, one of my coaches on my team, I love how she does it, but she always does like a week one recap of her challenge group and kind of like does a little summary of amazing things that are happening and, and happening and posts like a neat picture so that publicly people are seeing that it's not just like weight loss transformations. It's like confidence building because she's sharing those testimonies about that, you know, um, that piece of it and not just, you know, sometimes I think it can get old, like for followers to just see like this physical transformation, but really telling those stories about, you know, the quotes that people are saying that are reflecting changes that are other than just the fitness and nutrition, but reflecting like, and then that's what really is speaking to those next challengers that hopefully are going to read those and then, you know, gain excitement. And then the other thing that um, I try to do, and I've tried to help my team with this is just, you know, always thinking about a new way to invite so that you're thinking of like different people that you could help, um, depending on like whatever the season may be. You know, I usually tend to like to do like some sort of Mother's Day challenge in May, you know, but just like, what, what can I offer people that's different this time around? And so, you know, like coming up with new content and fresh things that you can offer, like my last group, you know, I, I'm a mom of three and I have a baby right now and I have an amazing three week nursing mama's meal plan, which I found through my past challenge groups was like something that was needed. Like people kept saying, but how do I eat while I'm breastfeeding and still like, you know, reach my goals. And so one of my really good friends helped me make this, you know, three week 
full on meal plan, clean eating for nursing mamas. And it was like something new that I was able to offer and get new, you know, excitement about my next group. So, um, and I've done that with like, you know, when 22 minute hardcore came out, I did like, I made that into like a couple's challenge, you know, like I just thought that was a great one to do like with your spouse. Like you get, if people who have seen me working out with my husband who are always like, how do you do that? So just always thinking about even if kind of the main meat and potatoes and bones of your challenge groups are pretty similar, but thinking about like what new content, you know, or how can you make it seem different than that same challenge group that you've been offering for two years. And I mean, it can be, you know, challenging to do that. I found, I feel like right now I'm in a place where I need to like change something, you know? So that's all I got. Um, no, that's perfect. Thank you so much for sharing. Loved, loved, loved it. Tulin, what did you want to add on, hun? I guess it's really important that I, it's an important part that, um, and you can always test this. So I, I know what my woman is looking for, right? She, she wants to lose weight. She, you know, wants to be able to play with her kids. She won't tell me weight loss because we identify each other. So she'll talk about a deeper level thing. But if you did a live and you said, Hey, um, or a post and said, Hey, I want to invite you to this group and we're going to work on your mind. It's probably going to be crickets. So meet your challenger where they are. And if it is weight loss, as an example, that's an opportunity to be able to get them to hear what you have to say, get them into your group, and then let them experience the mental mindset transition. Because if you invite people based off of weight loss, things like that, you're going to meet them where they are, but you're going to take them to where they need to be. And so that's what my groups do. So I, so they're watching my ups and my downs, my weight loss or whatever it is that's going on or my confidence or whatever it is that's inspiring them to do this. But I don't lead with mindset because nobody who's struggling thinks that to, they need to work on their mind before the rest of it happens. That's our job. If that's the direction you want to go and you incorporate that in the group and they have no idea. As a matter of fact, in my coaching and move your body group, I used to spoon feed them the modifications for all the dances and stuff like that as a plus size woman. I don't do that anymore because I was spoon feeding them so much that I wasn't teaching them to think with their mind how to move their body and own their body and not waiting for permission for me on how they should move their body. So I actually took that all out. And so the whole thing is completely mental mindset. Mm -hmm. And they don't know that going in and you will just see the results come in and they will have longer term weight loss or at least if they start to fall off track, they'll be like, oh crap, but I learned all this and because I know all this, I'll never want to quit again. So anyways, I thought I would just clarify. I don't, I don't lead with mindset or crickets. Totally. Oh, that makes complete sense. Thank you so much. Let's go. Hey, Andy, I know Melissa, your phone keeps on cutting out. Let's, let me grab um, Andy real quick because she's only down to one child right now. So I know things are probably a little bit better. I'll unmute you. There you go. <laughs> hey, guys. Thank you so much for all your insight. Um, honestly, I think I say this every week. I jump on and I get nervous because you guys have so much to offer. And I go, Ugh. I don't know if I do. Um, like I said last week, Shane and I work hand in hand. She couldn't be on today. Um, and we're constantly going back to the drawing board lately because we feel like we're just kind of stagnant with things. And we just talked before this call. Um, one thing that we have been doing that I think has been helpful is a prep week where we set it up to where the start of the challenge group and the app doesn't start until day one. So the week they can't check in because when we did the opposite way, people were checking in, but it's all information that we want them to focus on before they actually start. So what I tell my challengers, we have a hard and fast day when we stop inviting to that group when you have to be in and have your stuff on order. So I always, I send an email and I say, as soon as your Shakeology arrives, start drinking it right away. Don't wait for the group to start. Dabble on on demand. This is the program you're going to start on whatever the actual start day is. And then I tell them there's going to be a week of prep. And in that week is where we talk about mindset and goal setting and meal planning and Shakeology. And I share videos of how we actually meal prep um, because we've been doing the meal plans for so long. You know, the way Shana and I do it is a little bit different. There's a whole video that we share about the containers and all these things so that they are ready with the logistics of things as well as part of the mindset of stuff, which I know it doesn't happen in one week, that's for certain, but we touch on that in that prep week. And we're trying to get them to not start to check in yet um, because otherwise I feel like they're not so much paying attention to it. You know, they're just checking that box, checking that box. So I do feel like that's been more helpful. It also helps that everybody's starting on day one together because prior to us doing that, we were 
kind of loosey goosey with letting people in a little bit late and then they felt behind and then they weren't getting the start that they needed for themselves. So it's a little bit difficult, you know, if you haven't had success club yet or whatever to have that hard and fast date, but I think it's better for our challengers and I think that they've been getting better results, which in the end is always best. So um, I guess that's what I have to share today. And I just think you all are amazing. So thank you for everything that you guys share. How adorable are you? And first of all, that was great content. So don't ever think that you don't have it. But I love the fact of having that hard date and being very specific. You want to give the best customer service because just like what you said, if you allow many in after the fact, they're not going to get the best results. And it allows you also to be able to invite me like, nope, that's my hardcore date. The next one is this day. So Andy, I love it. So thank you so much. Okay, Melissa, it's all you, girlfriend. I hope that we can keep you. I know. Uh, let me know if you can hear me and I'll move around. I came outside to see if I got better reception. So some of the things that I've been doing in my um, challenge group is kind of like with my team page, I'm providing them with, with a calendar so that they know what to expect. And it's not just like um, wham, something different every week. And so the first week, the same thing. We're doing um, a prep week and we are um, basically getting familiar with how to log in what our containers are used for, where we fall in brackets, and things like that. I also leave one day open, um, and, and notoriously I do it on Sundays, um, but if that doesn't work for them, I'll let them choose a different day, and I will get on a 15-minute call with them. Um, and I will basically handhold through that. We can create a quick shopping list. They can give me any questions they have since they just got their – their program right before we get started and then um, I don't know I feel like mine are pretty basic I kind of keep it fun and light and um, I'll do like motivational Monday pick and I'll do a picture with me and Jenna and I'll ask them to drop a picture of what motivates or inspires them below um, transformation Tuesday if I I'll share something either for my team or my personal or I'll even go to the Beachbody website and then I'll ask them what is one area of your life that you would like to see transform so I'm not just leaving it to weight loss. I'm helping them open up their mind. Um, and then I'll just kind of go throughout the week with something like that. Um, and I'm always asking open-ended questions in my challenge groups because I want to generate conversation and remind them that this isn't my group. This is our group. And it's not about me. It's about helping us get better as a team. And I use the word team a lot so, because that way I'm forming them so that they way when they are ready to take that next step and become a challenge go from challenger to coach they're already familiar with a lot of the verbiage that i'm already using so that when they get into our team page it's not like what are you talking about and i'll even do like coach celebrations in my challenge group so that they understand like hey this is thursday we celebrate people not only in their weight loss but when they're making business transformations as well so those are the some of the things um and I've had a hard time um, implementing the personal development but i wrote down a ton of notes um, so I'm definitely going to do that. I've never really done them together. I've done like book clubs um, or I've worked with specific people on it, but never really incorporated into my challenge group. So that's a huge um, takeaway that I'm going to because I think if I could get a lot of people on the same one, my number one, the email that they get from me, I always recommend everyone reads You Are a Badass because I feel like that is such an empowering book and really helps people make that mental mind shift, but um, I think I'll start incorporating that more into the challenge group. It doesn't hurt to try it, girlfriend. I promise yeah. you that. And it will feed their soul, you know, which is amazing. Um, but I love the fact that you jump on a phone call with them. You give them an opportunity to really be there for them. You know, I, that will go leaps and bounds. And for those customers, those, you know, new coaches to know that you're there, that you care for them, that this is about their journey. I love that. So thank you for sharing that. Um, amazing takeaways. So I hope this has inspired you ladies to really change things up or maybe tweak a couple things or add to, or maybe you got a good book recommendation, whatever it may be. I hope this ignites your fire to have an incredible May. The fact that it's Monday, May 1st, I mean, hello, two bad A things happening in one day, right? So this is your opportunity to start really, really, really fresh and really draw on that momentum of like, how can I make this better? What can I do to excite it? It reminds me, you can say, yes, right? 
bad A. Um, <laughs> it reminds me of when Amy Silverman was on the call and she said she constantly has to change it up because if you are bored, I promise you, your customers and your coaches are definitely bored. So make it fun, make it exciting for you and always, always, always go in with the intention of how can I make this person successful? Because I promise when you make others successful in the business, in challenge groups, you will become successful. Focus on other successes and it will make you do the same. So our last little bit here, we only have about seven minutes. And real quick before I get into this, but what do we want our next, um, our next call to be? It's going to be on the 15th, two weeks after that is Memorial Day, so we're not going to have it. Um, but what is our next call going to be on? You know what I would like to talk about? Yeah, yeah. I'm just throwing it out there, but I'm thinking because it would maybe be a good one to go off of this challenge group one. But what I feel like my struggle is, um, is like, I'm good at like finding my person, getting my people hooked up with the challenge group, group, getting them in the group. But then sometimes I feel like I lose them. And so I'm, I'm looking at that more like long-term retention with your challengers and like what that means. Because like I said, I do have these veteran challengers that do stick around, but then I do feel like there are these people that like kind of just, you know, whatever. And I, I would like to hear some tips that you guys use for just better retention because I know I just personally sometimes feel overwhelmed like it's amazing sometimes when you're like wow like big success club numbers and you have all these new people coming in and you're excited but I feel like when my numbers are increasing like that and they compound that people like somehow slip through the cracks so mm -hmm. I just like to know how people manage that how they manage their groups because you know you can't have a group with like 200 people or maybe you can but I just wouldn't do that so I'm just curious about that totally. So it's easy to go on to the next shiny object rather than to continue to give yeah. to that. I just want to feel like I am yeah. completing that circle because I, I don't want to feel like I've gotten people, you know, halfway or even three quarters of the way, but then it's like they drop off. So like that long term, you know. Perfect. I love that. Anything else you want to add to that, ladies? Do you all agree? I kind of feel like it's kind of like that revolving, like what do you do? Yeah. Too, and is there anything else you want to add on to that? No, I was going to say, I have a group with 400 ladies in it. And um, what I do is I not only have my coaching, but I'll have like weekly themes or it'll last for a couple of weeks and things like that. So, and I take really good care of all my ladies, but they take, they do an amazing job taking care of each other. Cause they're not, mm -hmm. as Melissa said, they're not just there for me. They have a community and a support system. And so um, I think by taking me out of the equation, I say, I don't want to be the voice. I have no interest in being queen bee. I want to be a part of a chorus and they love that. And I use the team thing a lot too. So I do have very large groups. Um, and they do awesome. Cool. So question to Lynn and Amy, do you guys go and comment on every single thing? I'm finding myself taking like an hour a night. <laughs> I, I will tell you, I have a tremendous amount of guilt if I don't, but if we start commenting on every single post, then we're setting the precedence that we're commenting on every single post. But I will tell you the thing that keeps me up at night, if I don't feel I've been that present, that bothers me. So I think it's, um, you know, somebody just doing a basic post, then they just done a basic post, then they don't need, but if somebody's sharing their results and things like that. So there are times I'm better at that and there's times that are not, but if it's a thing that really keeps me up at night, is if I'm not present enough, but I've learned not every single comment is going to get a post. I mean, not every single post is going to get like a long comment back, if that makes sense. I love that. So let's just move with Amy's topic. I love that. And we'll just add um, coaches into it too. So challengers and coaches, how can we keep that everlasting thing going between the two of them? Cool. Okay. The last thing I want to ask is, um, anybody that went to Punta, Punta Gana wanted to share a big, huge takeaway. Ready? Go. You have a couple minutes. Oh, well, I love Chris Downing. I think that that was probably an Isabel Dykler talking about Shakeology was probably, I mean, the like vacation part of it was great. Um, but what I, my respect for Chris Downing and the type of trainer he wants to be, he's just like, you guys, I don't want this to go to my head. Like, this is about you. You're powerful. You're beautiful. Like, let's change lives. Because they wanted a super person. And that's like, he is. He's so great. So I'm really, really excited about him. And I just truly believe that his type of training is going to be that mental mind shift for people that are my tribe that need that. Because like, Shanti is my man because the way he speaks. And so Chris Downing is just going to be like that. Um, and then Isabel Deichler and just 
I I don't know. Like it was just that reassurance, not reassurance, but just like conviction of what we're a part of. And I think that's what excited me the most is the direction that Beachbody is going and how cool is it to be a part of something that literally is cannot compare to anything else and that it has no geographical boundary. And I and I'm just so excited about that. Thank you so much for sharing. Doug did call me on Saturday. It was funny. Um, he called me and I got done. I did a 5k and he called me. He's like, Hey, are you in the office? And I really had to think about it. I was like, what day is it? And he's like, Hey, we just got done with a Chris Downey workout or this maybe was the day before, but people were literally in tears after his workout because of his motivation. His- I cried. Yeah. You just, mm-hmm. you're like Love that. sitting there shaking, thinking I can't do this anymore. I can't do it. And he's like, you can do it. And you're like, okay, I will. I will. I will. Yeah. He's amazing. I won't let you down. No, yeah. I love that. Yeah, so he did say that. Like, so what did cool. he say? He said, most of the world stops when it starts to burn. And once you just push yeah. through that, barrier like you just ignite a whole thing in you you know it's it's so perfect thank you so much for sharing is there anybody else that wants to share any big takeaways anybody on their team that had a huge takeaway that maybe went no hey you know what i would ask you just to go back to your team if there was anybody that was there to go and share it on your next team call to share the excitement to share the love and that's the whole thing about these live events you know, not all of us get to go to them, but it is the content that you bring back of who was there, have them share it. So just a little challenge for you. Uh, I get it. A little FOMO. I get it. To then, that moment you have to stay off of um, social media for a little bit. Totally get ya. But ladies, thank you so much for popping on today. Build off of that excitement. Know that each and every single one of you is absolutely amazing. I adore every single one of you. Thank you for, you know, jumping on and taking the time out today and now make it a great month. Okay. I'll talk to you in two weeks. Bye loves.